The ocean roared like a beast enraged, waves crashing violently against the jagged rocks that lined the shores of Devil's Reach. It was a desolate, treacherous stretch of coast known to sailors as a graveyard for ships, where countless vessels had met their doom, lured by the sinister beacon of the lighthouse that loomed on the cliffs above. The Eclipse, a sturdy merchant ship, was fighting against the storm. The crew struggled at their posts, eyes wide with fear as the ship was tossed like a toy by the raging sea. The captain, a grizzled man named Fenwick, gripped the wheel with white-knuckled hands, his gaze fixed on the looming lighthouse. We're off course, shouted the first mate, his voice barely audible over the howling wind. The current's pulling us towards the rocks. I see it, damn you, Fenwick growled, straining against the wheel. He knew the stories of Devil's Reach, of ships drawn to their destruction by the cursed light that shone from the old lighthouse. But he hadn't believed them until now. The light, a sickly greenish glow, pierced through the storm, beckoning them closer. It was no ordinary lighthouse. Its dark stone tower seemed to claw at the sky, and the light that spun in its lantern room was cold and malevolent, more like a watchful eye than a guide. Hard to port! Fenwick roared, but it was too late. The ship shuddered as it struck something unseen beneath the waves. The crew was thrown off their feet and a horrible grinding sound filled the air as the eclipse began to tear apart. Abandon ship, the captain bellowed. Get to the boats. Panic erupted on deck as the crew scrambled for the lifeboats. The ship was sinking fast, water pouring in through a massive gash in its hull. Men leapt into the churning sea, clinging desperately to bits of flotsam as the storm raged on. Fenwick stayed at the helm, his eyes fixed on the lighthouse. Something moved in the light, a shadow, a figure. A chill ran through him as he realized someone, or something, was watching them, waiting. As the eclipse broke apart beneath him, Fenwick leapt into the icy water. The cold was a shock, stealing the breath from his lungs, but he forced himself to swim. The waves battered him, dragging him under, but he fought his way towards the shore, driven by a desperate will to survive. When he finally staggered onto the rocky beach, gasping and trembling with cold, he collapsed. He lay there for a long time, staring up at the lighthouse, its greenish light spinning slowly above him. He wasn't alone. Around him, other survivors were crawling onto the shore, their faces pale and stricken. We need to find shelter, one of the men said, his voice shaking. This storm will kill us if we stay out here. Fenwick nodded, his gaze still locked on the lighthouse. There, he said, pointing. We go there. The men exchanged uneasy glances. They all knew the stories, but there was no other choice. The cliffs were steep and unforgiving, and the storm showed no sign of abating. They made their way up the rocky path to the lighthouse, struggling against the wind and rain. As they neared the base of the tower, the door creaked open, as if inviting them in. Maybe someone's inside, one of the sailors muttered, though he didn't sound convinced. They stepped inside, shivering and soaked, their footsteps echoing on the cold stone floor. The interior was dimly lit, the walls lined with dusty, cobweb-covered shelves. A spiral staircase wound upwards, disappearing into darkness. Hello? Fenwick called out, his voice echoing eerily. Is anyone here? No answer. Just the sound of the storm outside and the distant rhythmic creaking of the lantern above. I don't like this, another crewman whispered, his eyes darting around nervously. This place feels wrong. Fenwick nodded slowly. 
There was a palpable sense of dread here, a weight in the air that pressed down on them, making it hard to breathe. Stay close, he said, drawing a knife from his belt. We'll check the lantern room. They climbed the stairs, their footsteps ringing out hollowly. As they ascended, a foul, briny smell filled the air, like rotting seaweed and something far worse. Fenwick's grip tightened on his knife, his heart pounding in his chest. When they reached the top, the lantern room was empty, save for the massive, ancient lens that turned slowly, casting its sickly green light out over the sea. But there was something else there. Something that sent a spike of fear through Fenwick's gut. Carved into the walls, etched deep into the stone, were hundreds of names. Names of ships, each one accompanied by a date. The dates of their sinking. Fenwick's eyes widened as he saw the most recent one, Eclipse, September 17th, 1823. Today's date. He staggered back, his breath coming in ragged gasps. The stories were true. This place was cursed, a beacon of death that lured ships to their doom, and they were trapped here. As the crew muttered in fear, one of the men screamed. Fenix spun around, knife raised, but there was nothing there. Just the man, staring in horror at the floor. What? What is that? He stammered, pointing. Fennec looked down and felt his blood run cold. The floor, slick and wet with seawater, was covered in footprints. But they weren't human. They were long and narrow, like the prints of some grotesque, deformed creature trailing up from the stairs they had just climbed. We're not alone, Fenwick whispered. A low, guttural growl echoed from the stairwell. Something was coming, something that stank of salt and decay, something that moved with a slithering, shuffling sound. Run, he shouted, but it was too late. The thing burst into the room, a twisted mockery of life, its body hunched and grotesque, covered in scales that glistened in the lantern's light, its eyes empty and dead, locked onto the men, and its mouth split into a wide, jagged grin. It lunged, and chaos erupted. The crew scattered, but there was nowhere to go. The creature was on them in an instant, its claws slashing through flesh and bone as if they were paper. Fenwick lashed out with his knife, but the blade glanced off the thing's hide, leaving only a shallow scratch. It turned on him, its jaws opening wide, and he saw the rows of needle-sharp teeth, the rotting stench of its breath washing over him. He swung again, desperately, but the creature caught his arm in its clawed hand, squeezing until he felt the bones crack. With a roar, it flung him across the room. He hit the wall hard, his head swimming with pain. As his vision blurred, he saw the creature standing over the broken bodies of his men, its eyes glowing with a cold, unholy light. Welcome, Captain, a voice rasped, and Fenwick realized with dawning horror that it was coming from the creature. Welcome to the Lighthouse of the Damned. With that, it turned away, dragging the bodies of the dead crewmen towards the stairs. Fenwick tried to move, but his body wouldn't obey. Darkness crept in at the edges of his vision as he lay there, helpless, listening to the horrible wet sounds of the creature feeding. Before the darkness claimed him, he thought he saw another figure standing in the shadows, a man, tall and gaunt, with eyes like pits of darkness, watching him with a cold, satisfied smile. And then there was only the storm and the endless hungry light of the cursed beacon spinning through the night, waiting for the next ship to come too close.